Partridge's Cowboys Cross Talk. Cross Talk. Check this out. Broadcasting live from the Cowboys Club at the Star in Frisco. Brought to you by A Number One Air, the official HVAC and electric partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Blockchain.com, trusted by millions, trusted by America's team. The National Medal of Honor Museum. Join the mission at mohmuseum.org. And by SWBC Mortgage. Customized solutions to help you meet your personal and business goals. Visit SWBC.com. Now, your hosts, Nate Newton and Kevin Gray. Welcome to week 16 of the National Football League. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas to all those. It is Cowboys Crosstalk live at the Cowboys Club at the Star in Frisco, presented by SWBC Mortgage. Kevin Gray of 105 through the fan. I'm joined always every single Wednesday by six-time Pro Bowler, three-time Super Bowl champion, member of the Black College Football Hall of Fame. He is, of course, Nate Newton. Nate, what's going on? Merry hey, Christmas. Man. Good but, to see you. Yeah, happy yeah, birthday, by yeah, the way. Yeah, happy yeah, birthday. Give, give your boy song. Yeah. Pound happy me birthday. Up. Pound, me up, baby. Happy birthday. Pound me up, baby. Happy birthday. Pound me up. Uh-huh. Yes, sir. Yeah. Number 61, born in 1961, baby. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Joining us from the KNC Masterpiece, which can be heard every day, Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Yes, sir. On 105 through the, the Former Mas Texas Ranger, loves his Mavericks and his Cowboys. Mike Bassick yes. joining us I this just Wednesday. Found out it's the year of Nate Newton. This That's right. Year, baby. That's right. <laughs> Mike Bass, the Masterpiece, baby. Yeah, yes, you make yes. me want to eat something when I hit Masterpiece. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good to see you, Mike. Good yes, to appreciate sir. you joining Thanks us. Thanks for having Steve. me. And joining us on this Wednesday night, he is a three-time Super Bowl champion. He was the number 85 pick overall in the fourth round back in the 1989 draft. One-time Pro Bowler, UTEP minor, Tony Tolbert joining us here on Cowboys Crosstalk on this Wednesday. How you doing? Appreciate you joining us, Tony. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. Appreciate you joining us on this Wednesday as we get ready for Eagles week. Cowboys taking on the Philadelphia Eagles on Saturday at 3.30 at AT&T Stadium. The Dallas Cowboys, of course, coming off their loss to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now welcome in Gardner Minshew, most likely, and the Philadelphia Eagles. Mike, I want to start with you because you have had an affinity with a man by the name of uh, Trevor Lawrence down there in Jacksonville. Yeah. You love yourself, some of that Clemson quarterback, and he put on a show against them Dallas Cowboys on uh, Sunday afternoon. From a Cowboys perspective, though, what do you want to take from that game that the Cowboys need to get better with as they get ready to take on Philadelphia. Well, I'm glad we have Tony Tolbert here because right now the defense is struggling a little bit after getting off to an unbelievably great start. They're dealing with injuries, especially, I would say, one of the cornerback positions. Mm -hmm. And my way of possibly solving that is guys getting to the quarterback quicker to not see that mm -hmm. guy cover as long. So, Tony, that's one of the things that I see right now. Trevor Lawrence, when they were down 27 to 10, he did start finding a, a backup cornerback on the field, had the big play, got momentum back on Jacksonville's side. And so I'm thinking, I don't know if the young guys can step up and cover for three, four, five seconds, but I'm hoping that guys can get to the quarterback and, and give that quarterback less time to see who's open. Yeah, it, it all ties in together. Um, they haven't had a, a great pass rush the last two weeks. I think they got one sack and like 70 opportunities. Mm -hmm. So they've been struggling getting to the quarterback. And on top of it, you know, you, you got Diggs on one side and, a, and a, uh, a kid that's not, you know, that's very young on the field. So, of course, you want to go, against, go away from Diggs and go at the kid that doesn't have the experience. And it all ties in. Ties in. A good pass rush leads to good coverage. Good coverage leads to, uh, you know, opportunities to sack the rush. quarterback. Yeah. And so um, they're going to have to find something to, to cover this guy, you know, to help him out, whoever's back there, and, and try to create opportunities where they get to the quarterback. Nate, Kelvin Joseph was the mark on Sunday. Trevor Lawrence picking on him several times in that football game, whether it be Marvin Jones, Zay Jones. They got after Kelvin Joseph. How does Dan Quinn go about figuring out who is going to be the person opposite Trayvon Diggs that's going to give them the best chance to play well in that secondary going forward here? Oh. Well, they got a few guys that got off the street, uh, and they, then they got Nation Wright. He's, he's the next man up. Uh, so you just got to scheme it up and maybe not go so much cover three to explain to me what that was today, mm -hmm. where you play uh, uh, area, yeah. you got that man to the deepest point. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe we have to uh, just kind of pull a Belichick 
put a guy obviously over there, help him out a little bit like that. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you run that guy out of there, but you 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 take away that that side of the field. And uh, th this is where I was telling my guys earlier today doing a, a, a podcast. This is where the big dogs hunt. Mm -hmm. This is where number ninety, Demarcus Lawrence. Mm -hmm. This is where Parsons. This is where uh, Fowler. This is where these guys have to come up big. They have. It's no we. You know, I need this. I need that. I'm being double team. You have been compared to some of the greats. Now it's time to come up big. Tony, talk to me about that because you had mentioned this pass rush only one sack over the last couple of weeks. What goes into the mindset of a defensive lineman, whether it be on the interior or on the outside, in terms of trying to get to the quarterback? What kind of mentality does it take to have that kind of consistency week well, in and week out? Well, first of all, they have to stop the run. They've been giving up a lot of big run plays. Mm -hmm. uh, I think teams are averaging like 140 yards against them offensively. And if you don't cre create opportunities where you put guys in long, long passing situations and they get a chance to run past or dictate what they want to do, it doesn't matter what your mindset is going to be. You're going to struggle no matter what. Yeah. And right now, they're, they're, in, they're in situations where it's third and two, third and four. Well, you can run the ball. You can play action. You can still do anything offensively. Now you got to get them in passing, you know, long passing situations. And that's when you get after the quarterback. You got to rush, turn around, run to the ball. And big plays happen like that. Fumbles, uh, interceptions, you never know. Yeah. Now, Vaughn Miller was – I had a podcast with Micah Parsons a week or so ago, and, and Micah talked about how his body is wearing down a little bit more this year than last year because he's playing defensive end primarily rather than running back or rather than linebacker. Yes. Can you talk about as a young player when you start knowing and how to manage the body? And then also, I'm sure he's really never played defensive end primarily either at Penn State or in the NFL. He seems to be fading a little bit as the season's going on. Well, well I remember, like, my rookie year, um, and that, that's probably the closest thing I can explain to you. We would have, I think, uh, six weeks, basically, right. of, of uh, exhibition games. You got four exhibition games. You go into camp two weeks, weeks before early, that. Yeah. Get yourself prepared. And so you get yourself prepared. Well, as a young guy, six weeks would equivalent to about three three college games for me. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and so you, about week 15, 16, your body just you, just, you didn't know how to prepare for it. After a couple years in the league, you're going to hit a dead spot. Usually it's around probably week 10, week 11, because your body's trying to, you know, recover from all the games. Uh, you get the bye week in between there somewhere. And then, you know, we did a good job maintaining, being strong at the end. We, we still worked out. Uh, we were required, what, two times a week? Yes, sir. Upper body, lower body. Yes. And so by the time the year in, you could tell the difference between our youth experience right. and the ability to rush the pass and play good, you know, play teams throughout the year. And we would always finish strong no matter what. And so maybe they have to go back to that. I'm not saying they don't, <laughs> but I don't want to throw nobody under the bus. But sometimes you have to go back to that method and just, and just understand – if I'm going to play defensive end, I'm going to have to get my body to play defensive end, not play linebacker. You know, you play the bigger part, and then you work with the speed and the linebackers, the linebacker skill set later down the line. Nate, this is a team now with three games to go, has clinched a playoff spot. They're 10-4. and four, They are locked into the playoffs. They're trending toward being possibly the fifth seed, most likely the fifth seed in the playoffs. As a team that's getting prepared for not just the end of the regular season but going into the playoffs, what does that mindset now start to look like as you're preparing to not only make sure you stay healthy to get to the playoffs, but now getting yourself week over week ready to get ready for the playoffs there? You already took the deep breath. That, that happened during Thanksgiving. You took your, like Tony was saying, that bye week, that, and that's around when we would have that, that, that Thanksgiving game. Mm -hmm. So you done took your big breath. Now it's time to push. Now everything turns into, you know what, this is extra. What do I do extra? Thanks to Tony Tobert, Charles Haley, they made me work out. You remember when y'all mm -hmm. come? They made me work out mm -hmm. because I wasn't the same player early in my career the first eight to ten games. And Charles Haley noticed that on film. Tobert mm -hmm. noticed that. But when I started working out and started keeping myself in shape and started eating a little better, stopped drinking on certain nights prior to the game, my game got stronger and better. Yeah. This is what they have to do individually and collectively. They have to take a deep breath and say, you know what, we played four games, and it finally caught up with us where we played very, very inconsistent. 
Now you're going to have to play consistent. Now you're building something now. So this game that they're going to have against the Eagles, this is everything. Not everything as far as their uh, playoff lives, but how you play this game. Can you be consistent? Can you build on this right here? Win, lose, or draw, you can build through this by being a perfect player. You're going to have a perfect game, yeah. but try to have one. Mike, what does that consistency look like for you that you want to see in the final three games as the Cowboys get ready for the playoffs? Well, I'd like, I know it, it's basic, but I'd like to see what they were playing like kind of before Thanksgiving. Obviously, the Minnesota game was close to a perfect game that I've seen the Cowboys play uh, in a while, and they both complemented each other. Mm -hmm. Right now, it seems like they're not really complementing each other, and I love that we have an offensive player and a defensive player, and, you know, as a former major leaguer, the pitchers don't really hang out with the position players, mm -hmm. vice versa. But we know that we have to complement each other because if I'm giving up early runs, like, hey, give us a chance. And, and the other way around is, hey, man, score a couple early. I, I'll keep the lead. Just give me a little bit of a lead, and I'm going to get you back into the dugout and keep hitting. And I feel like right now the Cowboys don't seem to, even though they've won some games through this, they don't seem to be complementing each other well. Tony, talk to me about that a little bit in terms of that complementary football that you want to see from yeah. this team. The biggest thing, like, when we played – Nate and the guys controlled the time of possession. They ran the Have ball. Have you heard it so yeah. before? <laughs> they, heard that, uh-huh. And, that, and uh -huh. that, that kept us off the field. It limited the, uh, the amount of the offensive opportunities that, that uh, we had to face. And then they, we played field position. So those are the three big things that, you know, we, we pushed ourselves and we tried to pride ourselves on. Right now, you know, it seemed like the offense is rolling. They, they run the ball, then they get away from it. Then the defense, they play zone, and then they blitz. You just never know what the hell you're going to be watching. <laughs> you what you're going to get, yeah. yeah. And so that's part of the problem. You know, an example, Jacksonville. You third and two. You got, they got one timeout. We talk about running the ball, running the ball. Mm. Hand the ball off. At least make them use their timeout. They don't kick that field goal. Game's over. Clock keep ticking. <laughs> Instead, you put your defense back out there, uh -huh. and they give a big play. So it, it, it all ties in. No yeah, the complimentary what. football, yeah. Complimentary football. Nate, talk to me about that because I think that's something that has been a large talking point this week, some of the game clock and situational football management that we saw on that drive there. How did you feel about not just that third and ten play, but also the other two plays to set that up where they did not force Jacksonville to use that time out there. 105.3, mm -hmm. the fan. That's right. When we, I listen to you guys, Monday, they were discussing this. And in my mind, I'm burning up. In his mind, he burning up. Because you say, well, if they throw this pass, and if they do it like this, some things are not up for discussion. Mm -hmm. They should have ran the football. That is not a discussion. Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. and I love Mr. Jones, and I love Coach McCarthy, and I hope that they can come back and help this man not lose his job this year. But that should not have been a topic of discussion come Monday. Mm -hmm. They should have ran that ball, and if we lost after that, you did the best possible thing for your team. And that's just that's the bottom line. Some things are not up for discussion, bro. Yeah. It's w interesting to me that they weren't aggressive on first and second down, which is fine. Run, run, run. Right. Mm -hmm. Three timeouts. Trust your defense to, to not give it up. And I go back to y'all in San Francisco, 1992 NFC Championship game, and all I can go off is by NFL Films. But right. Nerf Turner says, what do you want to do? And Jerry says, I want the first down. Right. And he tells them immediately. And so the ball goes to Alvin Harper. Alvin Harper makes a big play. And I don't know this. I was just wondering, right. what was the communication between McCarthy and Kellen Moore there? Because does it become third down? And he says, well, I really want the first down now. Or did he tell him on first down? I want a first down. I don't want to waste the timeouts. I want to get the first down because it seemed to be two plays were just let's run to make them call timeouts. Then on third and ten, it's like, no, I don't want them to use any more timeouts. I want to be aggressive now. Mike, let me, let me say this right here. What was, up, what was said is okay. Uh, I, I know, you know, that Coach McCarthy felt like his defense was withering. He felt like they had gave what they could yeah. give. And he felt so they were going for the first down. But what shouldn't have been discussed was how you was going to get the first sure. down. Sure. Mm -hmm. and, and that, and, and uh, you, you, you can kind of get comfortable when you beat them boys down the road. 
You can get comfortable when you explode all over the Colts. You can get comfortable against teams like that. But teams with good quarterbacks, this kid is above quarterback. And do you know and respect who their coach is? Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you just – guy that's just, been around the NFC East for a while. So, or was for a while. You know, so even if I said, Mike, I want a first down. But you go out there and go to chunking this thing all over the field. <laughs> I'm like, come on, dog. What did you just say to me? Yeah. <laughs> come on, man. Let's take our first break here on Cowboys Crosstalk, presented by SWBC. Kevin Gray, our three-time Super Bowl champion, SWBC, Nate Newton. Baby. Mike Bassick of the KFC yes, Masterpiece. Sir. And our Cowboys legend, Tony Tolbert, joining us this Tony week on Tolbert. Cowboys Crosstalk. Coming up next on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network, as the Cowboys get ready to take on the Philadelphia Eagles, Nate Newton, does Dak Prescott have an interception problem? We'll talk about that next on 105 Through the Fan. To SWBC Mortgage's Cowboys Crosstalk. Cross yeah, check this out. Broadcasting live from the Cowboys Club at the Star in Frisco. It is Cowboys Crosstalk presented by SWBC. And SWBC customized solutions for individuals and businesses are just a click away. Visit SWBC.com to learn more and start your next adventure. Kevin Gray of 105 through the fan, our three-time Super Bowl champion, six-time Pro Bowler, uh. Nate Newton. Mike Bassick of the KNC Masterpiece on your home of the baby. Dallas Cowboys the Texas Rangers 105 through the fan. And our Cowboys legend this legend. week, Pro Bowler and three-time Super Bowl champion, UTEP Minor himself, and Tony my Tolbert. roommate for nine years. <laughs> roommate for nine years. You yeah. put up with Nate for nine Pretty years? Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> nine years. Yo, what's, wow. what's your best memory of uh, being Nate Newton's roommate for nine years? No, you know what? Uh, Nate was a big reader. People don't know that. He yeah. loved novels. Yeah. 
Uh, was it <laughs> Westerns? Westerns, yeah. Westerns, yeah. Westerns. Oh, okay. that was it. Now, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Louis L'Amour. Yeah, yeah. And, and his son is the same way, his, uh, King. Yeah. Reads novels, the same kind of novels. I'm yeah. like, he passed that trade on. <laughs> yeah. Man, you didn't tell me you was a reader. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm back okay, doing okay. it now, man. Yeah, mm -hmm. reading for you, man. It's fundamental, man. Even though, you know, I don't practice uh, proper English. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I can't read. Yeah. How, how much did you guys talk to each other since offensive linemen, defensive linemen? It was never a talk. No. It was never a discussion. <laughs> it was always him trying to dictate to me <laughs> how sorry the offense is. <laughs> We're going to whoop you on practice uh, again uh, this uh, week. Oh, We've been. <laughs> That's exactly I'm what it telling was. you, man. I would come in, and uh, we could just be able to score a thirty. Point. See, he laughed because he know. That's exactly yeah. what he was saying. We'd be able to score thirty. <laughs> you back then, I'm three twenty, three twenty five. You fat Greek, y'all sorry. <laughs> I, I, dog, I'm not gonna take all this abuse next week. <laughs> you sorry. I'm, Hey, bro, it was a dictatorship. <laughs> so we appreciate Tony yeah. Tony's this week here on Cowboys Crosstalk. Uh, some news, gentlemen, coming out of the NFL with respect to your Dallas Cowboys. Seven of your Dallas Cowboys mm. have been named to the Pro Bowl games this year. That includes Zach Martin, who is going to be a Pro Bowler for the Ray, eighth Ray. time. Yes, sir. Demarcus Lawrence, a third time. Trayvon Diggs, second okay. year as a Pro Bowl player. Great, CeeDee great. Lamb, second Pro Bowl selection. Right, Micah Parsons, right. second consecutive year, already a Pro great. Bowler. Tony Pollard, mm. Pro Bowler wow. for the first yes, time big day, in his pay. career. And Kevontae Turpin is your seventh yes. Dallas Cowboy Pro Bowl player as a return specialist. So seven Dallas Cowboys making it to the Pro Bowl games this right. year. Your thoughts, Nate, as a six-time Pro Bowler and these guys going to I'm, the Pro I'm Bowl. I'm happy game. for them that the peers see fat, fit, the fans and coaches see fit. Yeah. But these guys being there, but what caps it all off is you can get to the second round of the playoffs. <laughs> yeah. I'm just being honest. Yeah. yeah. That's what caps it off. And that, that's, how we, that's how we looked at it because our first year, we only had two guys. And, and then, offense. you know, and, and, and they were off. You see that? Mm -hmm. see that? <laughs> he <They> remembers <laughs> <laughs> And Coach Johnson had to literally come in and calm down our whole team because we was getting ready to ride up on the NFL. Wow. And so he said next year. And then I, I was so happy when my man made it. Because I had to put up with that every year. How <laughs> <laughs> did, did, did this dude make it? I didn't vote for him. But how did this I'm, sure that, I'm sure there's a certain pride, though, there. Yeah. You, obviously, you want to have the team success in winning games and right. winning championships. But I'm sure for an individual, having that kind of success is important, especially for your career as well. Man, it, it was so hard to get in the, in the Pro Bowl because yeah. they had Reggie White, Chris Dolman, uh, Charles Mann. Hey, yeah. It was so many defensive ends. Yeah. And Charles. Haley. Haley. So it was so hard. So when I got there, I, I was pretty damn happy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you were. I'm sure you were. Yeah, yeah man. Seven Dallas Cowboys <laughs> making it to the Pro Bowl games I'm happy this year. for those guys. Yep. Congratulations to those gentlemen. Uh, one of those gentlemen uh, who receives the ball, C.D. Lamb, gets that football from Dak Prescott, of course. Dak Prescott, 11 interceptions in nine games. I'm going to start with Nate on this one. You played with a quarterback who knew how to take care of the football and did so consistently year after year. What are you seeing from film on Dak Prescott that concerns you most about what we've seen in terms of the possible turnover issue that we've seen it, from it, him? It's a thin line between uh, being aggressive and protecting your team. Mm -hmm. and, and when every time you throw one of those routes that you say you were being aggressive, you, you give the defense – the upcoming defense, hey, man, just, just – he'll force one in there. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have that type, of, that type of receivers where you've built up that type of uh, trust and belief, that's one thing. But you can see sometimes where the receiver didn't do what he was supposed to do or Dak should have just pulled it back. Don't let it, that aggressiveness uh, hurt you because it will. The better teams you play, like Philadelphia – Go out and be aggressive against those corners. See what happens. Mm. Don't do that. You don't have to be aggressive in, in, in every situation. It's about field position that Tony talked about. It's about sometimes letting your defense do, uh, put you in a better position. Give everybody a chance to help you win the game. It's not solely based on whether you're a great quarterback or not. It's based on can you, can you know the tempo of what's happening, the pace of the game. The greater quarterbacks in this league always understand the pace of the game. They ain't got to even be told that about by the offensive coordinator, they know when they okay, our defense been out there too long. Mike, what concerns you about what you've seen from Dak in terms of the turnovers at times from him? 
the to Nate's point, the risk reward value. So sure. what, what's the what's the reward here in trying to force it? If you're up twenty seven to ten, if if your defense is having a good game, what's the reward by trying to get the ball there? Because if it doesn't work out and they get the ball on your thirty five yard line, all of a sudden you've changed the whole game. If you have to punt, and I think some of the best quarterbacks would go, oh, that wasn't a good pass. I think it was intentionally a, a ball thrown at their feet. Like, I'm not yeah. – it's yeah. incomplete. Fine. My completion percentage went down. Fine. I don't care. They didn't get the ball, and they're going to have to drive on my defense 70 yards. They're not going to only have to drive 35 yards because I feel like in that Jacksonville game, once they hit the big play to Jones against Kelvin Joseph, that yarder, gave yeah. them on the sideline the belief – that we can do this. And, I, and, and, and then you get a turnover, mm -hmm. and, and things just start all of a sudden. Kind of a snowball effect, yeah. Everything starts going in another direction. And, and, and so that's the one thing about Dak is, and one thing that Troy Aikman's my favorite Dallas Cowboy of all time. And when you look at what Troy Aikman would do in the regular season versus the playoffs, I don't know how he did this because you're always playing better teams in the playoffs. He got a time and a half better. Everything went up. His completion percentage went up. His touchdowns went up. His yards went – like, everything got better. And that's the one thing about Dak. We're getting close to the end. And this is where Super Bowl winners, they start all of a sudden playing football that you're like, gosh, you weren't even playing that good against, let's say, <laughs> Indianapolis. But now you're playing this good against San Francisco? This yeah. is – you know, so that's the one thing. He has to elevate his game against the better teams. Uh, no, I completely agree with, with what uh, both of them said. I remember Jimmy always preaching, it's not the team that makes the, the, the biggest plays, it's the team that creates the least amount of turnovers. Mm. And the more you, you hurt yourself and you put your defense in situations where they can't overcome, the harder the game's going to be. We, we, fellas, Mike, I need you on every week. I begged them for 10 weeks straight. We need to control the clock, whether we win, lose, or draw. We need to come out of there with at least 32 minutes of, of, of possession time. I said because at the end of the year, no matter how many days you get off during the week, the game is going to beat you up. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I am not shocked that Michael Parsons is saying what he's saying. Go back and look at the first 10 weeks and tell me when did we win the, the turnover, I mean the uh, possession, time of possession battle. It hurts, brother. It hurts. I'm interested in this discussion because the defense has struggled the last several weeks. Yes. Obviously, what you saw against Jacksonville. And now, as an offensive guy, we're talking about the aggressiveness of Dak Prescott. Are you concerned that this team offensively is going to have to play a style where they're going to have to outscore teams because defensively right now, it doesn't seem like they're going to be able to stop teams based on the lack of pass rush. You got suspect corner on the outside there out opposite of Trayvon Diggs. Is this team going to have to outscore teams because defensively right now they're not playing the way that we've seen them be capable of playing so far this year? Well, one thing, just think about the first game. Uh, Dak gets hurt. He goes out. Cooper Rush comes in. What, he played four games? Four games, five, yeah. five games. Mm -hmm. Your philosophy was run the ball play defense, special teams. When Dak came back, why did, you, why did you just junk that philosophy? Because it was working. And so I didn't understand the sudden switch from that kind of recipe because you, the defense wasn't playing a lot. As you notice, they were fresh coming on the field. Talking about that ball control. Yeah. Ball control. They ran the ball. They played great, great special teams. Why would you deviate from something that was working? That's, a, you know, that's, that's yeah. telling more. You have to ask him. But that's what you should go back to because the, the, you're about to go against Tennessee, Philadelphia, Washington. They all run the ball. Your next three weeks, you think he's going to be hurt now? They're going to test your manhood. Yeah. You've got to understand, Derrick Henry is 6'3". My size. 265. <laughs> to, 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 to whatever he weighed yeah. this late in the season. Yes. Can you imagine him chipping Michael Parsons? Mm -hmm. Going out into a route. Uh, can you imagine him and Parson clashing head on? That is not, you think we're going to have to control that game just like we're going to have to control this game. Mm -hmm. uh, fellas, I, I'm not a stat man. They have 55 sacks, and I think we have 55 sacks. Their 40 sacks come from their linebackers and three, uh, and three defensive linemen. 
brother, we cannot do the Hollywood shuffle with these offensive <laughs> linemen against this week. Uh, brother, listen to me now. You go to playing these games and shuffling in these offensive linemen with one guy, a son, got 12. Uh, this sweat dude done turned into a beast, Josh got nine. Sweat, yeah. And Graham is always a cowboy killer. Yeah. He got 8.5. What are you going to do? You try to keep them off the field. Yes, right? sir. And, yeah. and what you're talking about, Tony, is I go to 2014. DeMarco Murray had a great year that year. The, defense, yards, the yeah. defense wasn't mm -hmm. a great defense. I can remember Rolando McClain had a, a nice season that year for the Cowboys, but they weren't on the field very much. And so all of a sudden, if I have an eight-minute drive and I'm able to score off of that, I always feel like, and you can – talk about this, right. Nate, if you're sitting on the sideline for eight minutes of game time, but more like 15, 20 minutes, and you haven't been on the field, I feel like at times you can get that offense who's just been sitting there for 20 minutes on the right. bench to press a little bit. Right. If you get a quick three and out there, and then you take the ball and you get it for another five or six minutes, you kill the whole quarter and they had the ball for three plays. And I feel like to help the defense, Kevin, what I'm saying is, is try to keep them off the field. Sure. I feel like it's going to come down to the players, man. Whenever we face a team that is, is talented or better than us, we seem, to, we seem to falter. Is that the coaches? Is that the determination of the players? I don't, I, I don't right. We can't get as close as they got to us. It's more social media now than ever, but our media was, like, always on us. <laughs> you, you know what time. I'm saying? All but the time. we can't get that close to these players, so we don't know – who is the inside drive? Mm. Is it is it Kellen? Is it is it Dak? Is it D Law? Who is the man that's driving his team? And I wish I knew because I'm looking for somebody to stand up and say, "Fellas, no more, no more foolishness." Real quick, Tony, who was that guy on the defensive side for you guys during your day? Uh, well, we I'll probably say Charles, but we we had a lot of guys just in our D line lock uh, room. We would challenge each other, like even in practice. If you was getting your butt kicked in practice, five dollars, and we would laugh at you. We talk about you. We get in our individual drill. And then we got to be fighting them. Oh yeah, <laughs> as I was around, we got to be fighting. You wonder like, why Tony so aggressive today? <laughs> what happens? Like he lost some money. It or was something. A, it What's was going? accountability, and we would sit in there and we would challenge each other because, to be honest, like if you were around here when we were one in fifteen. Yeah. And you were some guy that came in here through the draft or just came off the street. We wasn't going to let you mess up our stuff. Yeah. Right. We was going to get you up out of here. <laughs> right. One way or another. <laughs> and that's how you have to, have to feel. Yeah. Every play is important. Every down is important to you. And it didn't just start on game day. I'm practicing against Nate, Larry Allen, Eric Williams. When you practice against that kind of talent and get in the game, you there. Yeah. The game is the easy part of it. Practice was the hardest part. I love what you're saying. I read one of the books recently on the L.A. Lakers. And in 1987, Magic Johnson, the leader of the team, he has a teammate. And they're halfway through the season. And this dude's, like, started 10 games. And he gets on the first bus. And he says, Magic Johnson at the front of the bus says, get off this bus. And he's like, Matt, what do you? He's like, no, you ain't a champion. Champion's right on this bus. Right. And they ended up winning the championship. And afterwards, <laughs> this teammate, right. Magic was the first to come up to him and hug him and said, now you're a Laker. Yeah. He, he said, you're not a Laker on my team unless you win a championship right. on my team. I know it's different. The Cowboys haven't mm -hmm. won in a very long time. But that's kind of that what you're talking about, that leadership of Magic was kind of showing just tough love. Like, you're a new guy on my team. But my team wins. And until you prove that you can help me win, you're not on my bus. Let's wow. take our next break right here on Cowboys Crosstalk presented by SWBC, SWBC Mortgage joined the more than 120,000 customers that we've helped to find their happier way home. Yes, we have. Visit SWBCMortgage.com to find a pro today. Kevin Gray of 105 through the fan. Nate Newton, Mike Baskin, our Cowboys legend. Tony Tolbert joining us this week live at the Cowboys Club at the Star in Frisco. Coming up next on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network, let's talk a little offensive line with our resident offensive lineman. Tyron Smith did something that he hadn't done since 2011 and looked pretty good doing it. We'll talk about that next right here on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network.
to SWBC Mortgage's Cowboys Crosstalk. Cross yeah, check this out. Broadcasting live from the Cowboys Club at the Star in Frisco. Cowboys Crosstalk presented by SWBC, SWBC PEL, helping to alleviate the HR administrative burden that comes with running a business. Leave the worrying to us. Visit SWBCPEO.com to find out more. Kevin Graff, 105 through the fan, our six-time Pro Bowl, the three-time Super Bowl champion, Nate Newton, Mike Bassick of the KNC Masterpiece on your home of the Cowboys and Texas Rangers, 105 through the fan. Our Cowboys legend this week, Tony Tolbert, Tolbert. going to join us here at the Cowboys Club at the Star in Frisco. Let's talk real quick, gentlemen, about the offensive line as we get ready to see the Cowboys take on the Philadelphia Eagles on Saturday on Christmas Eve, hopefully giving all Cowboys fans the Christmas gift that they've been looking for in beating the Philadelphia Eagles. Tyron Smith, Nate, did something he hadn't done since his rookie year in 2011 and played right tackle on Sunday against Jacksonville. How did you feel about Tyron's performance and the offensive line doing a little bit of shuffling to keep that group together there? I like Tyron playing the shuffling. I, I'm, I've never been far and I never will be far because when you play better teams in this league, teams with potential playoffs, when you do all that shuffling and you start putting guys on different levels, you start getting sacks, you start getting late hits, you start throwing interceptions, and all of that came true. I've been telling you for how many weeks. Mm -hmm. See, this is the thing about it, man. Uh, 105 need to play a smidge of our shows all during the day. Start <laughs> with the masterpiece. You know what I'm saying? Because you cannot. I love Peterson. And, and it's great when I hear people say, he's a future Hall of Famer. Oh, yeah, Jason Peters, Not yeah. right now. Right. Not right now. He can't go but 15 plays. And then you have to take him out of the game because anything beyond that, he's not ready. You doing him a disservice. Tyron could have played the whole game. What happened to playing the whole game? You spent 13 weeks rehabbing. T, did we ever have to amp up or ramp up? No. That's what uh, – Britt Brown is the greatest at that. This kid was ready to play. But we, we – that, that, that shuffling of his line, brother, that does not work. Tony, what did you see from Tyron on Sunday, especially knowing how difficult it is to go up against terrific offensive line and what he was able to do on Sunday against Jacksonville? Uh, I, I thought he did a pretty good job. Um, my biggest thing, it, it, he's been hurt quite often. I would prefer they move him to a guard or something where he doesn't have to move mm. that much. Your space is what, Nate, about three yards forward, three yards back Come to the side, man. something <laughs> like that. <laughs> so, so, you see, you see, so, that little jab in there, yeah, yeah, that little jab in there, yeah. Wow. Uh -huh. No, but, but you, you, you limit how much movement he has to do. And so, I, I think moving him to guard in the future would be a good spot. Uh, but I can tell you this, I'm very surprised about 73. I, I don't, but Tyler Smith, Smith uh huh. He's done a hell of a job. The kid's grown up right before your eyes because the big knock on him was, penalty all the time and mm -hmm. he wasn't physical against certain guys that kid's grown and, and, and been a hell of a player Mike you're starting five your best five offensive linemen are who and you want to see that for the rest of the year for yourself I like what they had last week set up is the Smiths on the outside Martin uh, obviously Biotish as your center um, and McGovern's your and left Mc guard and McGovern because he's been there the whole time um, obviously, you'd love to have Terrence still healthy, but he's not healthy anymore. Sure. So if you can roll with those guys, and then you do have, I think, a good backup in Peters that can back up if something else happens. But He will back up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. You got as long as Nate don't see Josh yeah. Ball out there, I think he's going yeah. to be all right as yeah. far as that uh, right tackle position but there. I don't feel like that's the weakest position of the Cowboys right now. I do think m there's more defensive holes because of injuries mm -hmm. than that offensive line being the, the major issue. 30 seconds real quick, Tony, because Mike started to touch on it. Injuries starting to pile up for this defense of side of the football. How concerned are you are about the attrition that this defense has suffered and their ability to be at their best by the time they get to the postseason here? Well, the biggest thing, you want to be healthy going into the playoffs. And, and like you said, right now they're struggling. They, they got to find some way to show up their run defense because if you can show up your run defense, most of the teams travel in the playoffs. They win Super Bowls and things, playoff games with their run offense. So you got to make sure you're stout run defensive, you know, from a run defensive standpoint. If they control the clock and, and get opportunities where they can dictate how they want to play, 
you're going to be in for a short playoff run. And they're going to be taking on a Philadelphia Eagles team that likes to run the football. Now, it doesn't look like Jalen Hurts is going to play. Nick Sirianni has not ruled him out officially yet as far as the game Saturday. So it looks like Gardner Minshew will be going there. But, Nate, real quick, this running game for Philadelphia is a talented group, talented, skilled players all over the place. What concerns you most about what this Cowboys team is going to see against Philadelphia? They're going to run the ball, man. Yeah. They're going to run the ball. Uh, Minshew, I mean, I got nothing against the kid. But why, why, why even hurt him up? Why even give him an opportunity to – because I'm, I'm going to throw it. I mean, I'm going to run it. 85 – yeah, I'm going to run it 85 times. <laughs> I'm, I'm just being honest. I, 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 they have a better defense than us right now, the Eagles. So I'm not going to hurt them. I'm going to run the football. I'm going to run the air out of it until you make me throw. They didn't make them throw the first game. And what, you got to make me throw the second game. I'm not throwing the football. If I'm, if I'm the Eagles, I'm just being honest. Let's take our final break here on Cowboys Crosstalk, presented by SWBC. Kevin Gray of 105 through the fan, Nate Newton, Mike Baskin, Mike Baskin, and our Cowboys legend, Tony Tolbert, joining us. Coming yes, up next, sir. we're going to catch up with our Cowboys legend, see what he's got going on, and we'll get predictions from everyone except Nate because we know how Nate's going to pick yes, on sir. Saturday. We'll do that next on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network. Cowboys Crosstalk. Cross yeah, Broadcasting live from the Cowboys Club at the Star in Frisco. Final segment of Cowboys Crosstalk for week number 16 of the NFL. Cowboys Crosstalk presented by SWBC live at the Cowboys Club. 
at the Star in Frisco, Kevin Gray of 105 through the fan, Nate Newton, our hey, three-time hey, hey, Super Bowl hey, champion, up? Mike Bassick, a champion Bassick. in all of our hearts at the KNC Masterpiece, Masterpiece, Monday through Friday. My, um, 105 through the fan, of course. And, of course, our Cowboys legend, Tony Tolbert, joining us here My this Wednesday dog. right here on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network. Let's catch up with our Cowboys legend before we get into predictions for Saturday's game between the Cowboys and the Eagles. Tony, what's been going on with you these days? How you been doing? And what uh, tell the folks what you've been up to out here these days. Man, I, I've been taking it easy. Um, been going back and forth to Jackson, Mississippi, kind of helping Dion out with the D-line. Mm -hmm. Um and just, just enjoying life, man. I, I, you know, I don't have any bench, business ventures that I'm into. I just get up, whatever I need to be doing to the day, <laughs> I do it. And take it easy. And then yeah. take it easy. How yeah. proud of you are, of Dion are you with the, all the success that he was able to have at Jackson State and now going over to take over Colorado with the Buffaloes uh -oh, there? That's my dude, man. I, um, I'm extremely happy for him. He got an opportunity. He, he made the best of it. And now he's moved on to another program where he can uplift another program that's been struggling. And I think he has the coaching staff and, and, and the mindset to do it. I'm interested in this question real quick. Mm -hmm. What's the one thing about Dion and that program that people may not necessarily know or understand about how dramatic of effect he had on Jackson State in that program there? Well, Jackson, um, of course, they, they have their, their struggles within the city itself. Sure. But you had a program that was down for a little while. And the opportunities, people don't understand. He, he you know, he, he gave up some opportunities through Under Armour and American Airlines and Michael Strahan. He used that to uplift some of the guys that, you know, the program itself. That's right, yeah. He's donated his sal half of his salary or whatever it was to the weight, to the uh, to locker room. Oh, uh, more than and, that, the and whole facility so, rebuilt. So that, the, the, the economic effect it had on the city, um, you know, I, when I was down there, I, like a T-shirt guy, he had his business went up like 300 percent because of wow. the different uniforms and, and shirts that Dion had. Yeah. Then you had Under Armour; they got different uniforms every week. So that was a big draw for the kids, as well as Dion being Dion. I, 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 and I could tell you this: people don't give him a credit for being as smart as he is. He's a very smart guy. He's a smart business guy. And if you look, if you could look past the prime time and that kind of deal and sit and have a conversation with him, you'll, be, you'll come across the press. Yeah. Yeah, he's he telling you, man. And uh, I walked into one part of the facility, and it's a shame because he left. He's leaving. I walked over, and it was empty. I'm like, whoa, what happened? I'm thinking it blew up the building. Oh, no, we got the new building. I went mm. in there. I said, well, Prime, I thought this was supposed to be, you know, before you got here, uh, a little bit after, he said, no, nah, man, I wanted my kids. I promised them that they would have this building yeah. and where they can eat breakfast, they can dress here, they can everything in this one building. And he, and he like you said, he, he made sure that happened, you know, and I'm not going to go into details of money sure, and sure, all sure. of that, mm -hmm. but he made sure that happened because he promised his kids. One of my highlights of my life was getting Dion out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he, he know, and I would talk to Vernon Wells, right. who's from here. I mean, yeah. he got to play right. with them with Toronto, Syracuse. Right. He's like, no, man, he really knows baseball, too. So as much as he knows about football, he can coach baseball, too. Yeah. He knows a lot about that game. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I saw him one day. I, he had a list. You know, a paper, a dude brought a paper, signed it on his desk. He said, thank you. I'm like, what is that paper? He had like 25, 30 names. He said, these are guys that are tick and tack on my chart. And I'm looking at how much they studied their tablet this mm -hmm. week, how many times they looked at their game film, mm -hmm. and I got it right here. So wow. this guy here may not be starting this week. This guy mm -hmm. here may I mean, he's on top of it. Oh, accountability. And I, I looked at him like, wow, dog. <laughs> Ooh, I'm glad that one held accountable when I played <laughs> with the Cowboys. <laughs> they said, I'm glad I didn't have the tablet in my day, because yeah, otherwise, yeah, who knows how much we would have been. Who knows, man? Been doing it. I'm, <laughs> over there, I'm over there on Harry Hines, dog. <laughs> hey, hey, now, hey, now, hey, now. Family show, family show. Uh, forgot, let's, take, let's take our last partner here. Liberty uh -huh. Tax is a proud partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Schedule an appointment today at libertytax.com slash Cowboys. Cowboys, Eagles. Saturday afternoon, 325, AT&T Stadium. Final home game for the Dallas Cowboys for the 2022 NFL season. Hard to believe that we are at that portion of the schedule where they are playing their final home game. Then they'll take on Tennessee and then Washington to finish up the season. We know how Nate's going to pick the game <laughs> on Saturday. He's going to say Cowboys by 100, so I ain't got to worry about it with Nate. Let's start with Tony, though. Tony, how are you feeling about the Cowboys taking on what most likely will be without 
Jalen Hurts for the Philadelphia Eagles on Saturday. Well, I'm going to be a homer. I'm going to pick the Cowboys by 100. All but, right, but, all right. But, but, but in my heart, I'm worried. Okay. Wow. There you go. Okay. You got a score? You got thick and No, I'm not taking No, no. <laughs> Nobody using no bulletin material there, for me. There, okay, there all right, go. all right. <laughs> Mike, how are you feeling about this Cowboys team after a very surprising finish in Jacksonville on Sunday as they get ready to take on Philadelphia with – it feels like a lot of the sizzle has been taken out of this game, given yeah. what we had going into Sunday and now what we're facing going into Saturday. I'm nervous about this game. I am going to pick the Cowboys to win by three. Okay. If you can't beat them at home against their backup quarterback, I don't know how three, four weeks from now, if you have to go to Philadelphia in the playoffs, you feel confident about beating them if Jalen Hurts is there at mm. that Philadelphia stadium with that crowd. So, I'm going to pick the Cowboys by three. I'll say 27-24. I think it's going to be a close game, though. I don't think the Cowboys are going to be able to win this game by double digits. I'm concerned, too. This is a team that has not stopped the run very well throughout the course of the year. And now what really concerns me is the opposite corner of Trayvon Diggs. And we saw Kelman Joseph struggle. We've seen Nashawn Wright struggle at times. There's not a lot of confidence to me right now and who's going to be playing opposite Trayvon Diggs and how teams may get after that side of the secondary. Not to say that Gardner Minshew is necessarily going to be able to do that, but they do have the capabilities with Devontae Smith opposite of A.J. Brown. I'm going to pick the Cowboys to win this game, but like Tony, I'm a little worried, got a little nervousness going into this game based on the way that the Cowboys have played and what we're thinking this team should be going into this playoff run that they're about to start in the, 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 the issue is not the cornerback, fellas. The issue is Jonathan Hankins. He was starting to build something. Yeah, he here. was playing real well. And, and, and that is the issue. It, it has been the issue all year, fellas. When we play sorry teams, we got, we got by. We even 200 yard rushes. When we play better teams, we cannot get by and get past the run. I'm telling you now, tr trust me when I'm telling you this. Miles Sanders on the year, over 1,100 yards on the ground. Tony Pollard, nearly 1,000 yards on the ground. A.J. Brown, over 1,200 yards receiving mm. for the Philadelphia Eagles. It's going to be – go ahead, Nate. Oh, what happened? Oh, no, what? I just – I'm just <laughs> – you better get hands on Brown. If you don't play hands Physical on Brown, Physical football player, you man. Yeah. And then you got Devontae Smith on the other oh, side. quick as lightning, bro. Yeah. Goddard's healthy. Dallas Ooh. Goddard been activated off of the injured list so that's as well. So that's a curse. Curse got to come up and take him. Now, you got these two bad boys, wide receivers. Yeah. You cannot, because you're going to have to have Diggs follow the big guy, Brown. That other dude's the, the quick as grease lightning, bro. Uh-huh. Devontae A Smith, cat on yeah, the marble yeah. table and can't, he, he can't be thrown <laughs> on his back. Yeah. Y'all going to have to deal with him. And the other part, to Tony's worry as well, Leighton Van Der Esch, dealing with that shoulder stinger right now. We've seen how well he's been playing this season. Does it look like he's going to be available, obviously, going into this week? Does that concern you, again, talking about the defensive injuries that this team is suffering right yeah, now? He, he's been uh, playing very well, and you take another piece that, that can help you on the run. You know, you, you just think you were giving up that many daggone yards with him in there, and he's gone. <laughs> it's going to be worse, to be honest. So, yeah, I'm very Tony, I'm going to keep it real, man. I don't <laughs> yeah, know, I'm man. I'm going to be very concerned. That linebacker core with uh, yeah, Anthony Barr. 99. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you forgot the Cowboys by 99, not 100. You're going to shave off that one point and say they win by 99. It's, uh, it's going to be a fun day, I think, at AT&T Stadium, though. Obviously, we are in the holiday spirit. It's Christmas time as well. And hopefully for the Cowboys, they give the gift to Cowboys fans that they always want, which is beating up on the Philadelphia Eagles and a chance to do it for your final home game of the 2022 NFL season. So hopefully it'll be a good day for all the Cowboys fans going out to AT&T Stadium. By the way, it'll do a monster number on Fox. I know Fox is like, oh, yeah. we're so glad we got the Eagles and the Cowboys <laughs> on Christmas Eve because that's going to do a monster rating. Going into I changed all my Christmas Eve plans. I'm at my parents at three o'clock. Usually I'm there at uh -huh. five o'clock yeah. on Christmas Eve, but it's three o'clock now. Well, my wife, she's not gonna be too mad at me because I'm gonna be at the game, but I'm gonna come right back home so I can wrap my daughter's Christmas gifts so she can open them up, you know, on, on Christmas Day so she's not too upset with me. So it's like you go to the game, but you hurry up and get back here so you can wrap these gifts. We appreciate Mike Bassick of the KC Masterpiece. Yes, Nate Duke joining us every single week in our thank Cowboys you, legend. Tony Tolbert for joining thank us you, here you, at the thank Cowboys you. Club at the Star in Frisco. My name is Kevin Gray. This has been the Great. Cowboys Crosstalk on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network. Cowboys Eagles Christmas Eve at 325 on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network. Merry Christmas and happy holidays. We'll talk to you in a couple weeks right here on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network.
This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!